What's up guys, Clayton Fioriti here. Today I wanted to talk about an American monster movie that we unfortunately never got to see. This is the Godzilla film that was going to be made by a lot of the talent that was responsible for Jurassic Park. You see, back in 1992, Sony Pictures Entertainment bought the rights to Godzilla from Toho. Their plan was to have their newly acquired company, TriStar Pictures, develop an American version of the monster, with screenwriters Terry Rossio and Ted Elliott pinning the script. In 1994, the script was completed, and the man who would soon go on to direct Twister, Jan DeBont, would be brought on to spearhead the project. Sadly, DeBont would leave in December of 1994 due to a multitude of problems that the production was having with figuring out the budget. It looked like this movie was going to skyrocket into the hundreds of millions at one point in time, which for comparison's sake was drastically larger than what Universal had spent to make the first Jurassic Park, which only cost around $65 million in the early 90s. When Jandabont left, the film would ultimately lose much of its identity and slowly morph into Roland Emmerich's version that got made in 98. However, before all of those decisions were made, Godzilla was going to get a gigantic redesign that was much more faithful to its original Japanese roots than what ultimately got made. Special effects master Stan Winston, fresh off of his success from the original Jurassic Park, would be brought onto the project in order to build the new monster which would eventually lead to the creation of this awesome Godzilla maquette. What I personally find to be so interesting about Stan Winston's interpretation of Godzilla is the fact that the animal looks much more crocodilian in the face compared to pretty much everything that we'd seen before. Visually, it seems to be the most similar to what was happening with the Heisei series at the time, although it most definitely has a personality of its own. Crash McCreary, the guy who helped design all of the awesome dinosaurs via concept art for JP, was also a part of this project helping get a good feel for how the monster would look in his much more American style. Another veteran of the Jurassic Park series that would end up working on this film was actually famed concept artist Ricardo Delgado, who would go on to eventually work with Joe Johnston and Steven Spielberg on Jurassic Park 3. Delgado's designs, though, were quite different to the work of Crash and Stan Winston, setting themselves apart in a pretty big way. Fans have even dubbed his version of the 1994 Godzilla as the Delgadosaurus. Now, one of the things that would have made this American version of the monster particularly interesting has to be the invention of a brand new kaiju called the Griffin, which was basically a giant biological weapon developed by an alien race that got sent to Earth in order to wipe out us humans. Described as having the body of a puma, wings of a bat, and possessing a hydra-like tongue full of snakes, the monster was going to be one serious problem for Godzilla. Models and visual effects maquettes would eventually get made for the creature and in my humble opinion, I think it would have ended up being one of the most original and interesting looking Godzilla enemies that we would have seen in a very long time. The basic story of this movie would have involved an ancient civilization of Atlanteans creating Godzilla in order to defend the Earth. The monster would eventually meet up with the alien griffin creature and that monster's little minions, which happened to be dubbed the Probe Bats. The battle would have ended with Godzilla ripping the griffin's head off and ultimately skewering it on top of the Statue of Liberty's torch, which would have been seriously cool to see, especially if it was done by the guys behind Jurassic Park. Of course, somewhere along the line, all of this awesome work that was being done on the movie would come to a halt. And once Jan DeBont left the project, the director of Independence Day would come in and totally retool the film in order to make his own version. In my opinion, the 1994 version of Godzilla is an American adaptation of the character that would more than likely have been one of the most visually interesting films of the series. This wasn't the first time that America had tried to develop a remake outside of Japan, and it most certainly wouldn't be the last. But for what it's worth, I definitely think this unproduced project could very well have been the absolute best. Anyways, thanks for watching today's video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed the content and come back to see me again sometime soon in the future. Now, whatever your own thoughts and opinions on the 1994 American version of Godzilla happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.